I have one last question. It's kind of the opposite of the AI question. So the podcast yeah. is named uh, Love Music More, and this is Love Music Why. So basically the concept is pitching somebody that's like a 12-year-old, 13-year-old, why they should love music, why it was so impactful in your life, why you know we give so much to it. It's like almost like a you know a, a stump speech or an appeal to music itself. And so I just want to hear in your yeah. own words, like why do you love music? Why why do you grind for this? Why why is the studio your like your home? Like what makes you tick? Mm. What drew you in? So I think I think there's two sides to it. One is being a fan of music, which I think always almost always comes first. Like you love other people's music, and then you decide I want to do it. And then there's the why is it that I found my particular thing in the studio and stuck with it, you know, despite it being just long hours and hard to make it work and all that stuff. And like, I feel like for a young person, this is what I would say, you know, you're born and you get one or two parents, right? And like, those are, those are the adults in your life. That's the perspective, right? But I don't really think that's enough. Like, I think as a kid, you need, like, you need to be, like, you need to experience other sort of grown ups. Now, it may be that the grown up is like 22 or whatever, but like other people in your life who have a perspective or something to add that's freed from your little world, you know? And so, like, people think of music as an escape, but it's what it really is it's like a portal into somebody else's universe. And because music is all about someone telling you who they are, it's a really great way to just connect with somebody different. And I think those are like, it's almost when, you know, when you're younger, I mean, I remember it's like, it's like maybe you haven't done psychedelics, but it is like a psychedelic, I mean, when you're 12, but it is like a psychedelic experience, like being in a space in your headphones with like some grown up like pouring their heart out and telling you how they feel about their fucking life and their fucking girlfriend and their whatever. And it's just like, as you get older, I think it's a different relationship because it's like you're out in the world and some of this is less alien and strange and less sort of trippy because like, you're like, I know about that. I had my heart broken once too or whatever. But like, I think getting those perspectives early in a safe way, right? In headphones, you're not having to like, and from all these like people out in the world, like trying to be their true self. I mean, I think that that's what it's about. Like, I always feel like at the end of the day, even though I'm like one of those, you know, song, I'm, it's all about the song or whatever. It's really all about the artist or the person at the other end of the telephone, basically. And it's like these people and their work end up really forming who you are, I think, to some degree. That and your parents, if you're lucky, you know, and your sibling or whatever. But it's like, it's like that access to a different world. It's not your peers. It's not your parents. You just escape into some other world. It's like reading. You know, some people get into really reading for that reason. It's like, my dad talks about he, you know, he grew up in a, you know, South Louisiana in the, you know, Lafayette and felt pretty alienated. He was like, just not always having a great time, but he escaped into books and books literally were his ticket out of town. He got out, he made a life for himself. You know, he married my mom, whatever. Like he transformed himself largely by basically having the voices of all of these authors. Like imagine you're like, you know, 14 and you're in the deep South and you're feeling like no one totally understands you. Cause you're the kid who's like sitting in like your class reading a book like in your binder and, you know, you get sent to the principals for reading in school, you know, like, and you're just like, what am I doing here? But on the other hand, you've got like, you know, um, the voices of like all of these like really worldly grownups right in front of you who are telling you about a different way that you can be and showing you there's a possible different way of being and thinking and, you know, that there's a big world out there. So I think music is just like, a more of a visceral, like mainlined version of that escape into other worlds, you know? So anyway, and then the reason I like studio is it's like, it's about play. It's about like having fun. It's about creating a space of just like, we don't get to play as grownups, you know, like everything is fucking serious. 
and there's rules, you know, and I think this is again, why like maybe coming back to some of the like more formulaic ways of teaching and learning are, are, are detracted because they, they set up the illusion that there are these like guardrails or these rules or these best practices in, in when the whole point is it's like the one time in your life when you don't have to do it one way or another. And I think that like that is probably what keeps me coming back more than anything about like, man, it feels so great when you just like rip a great mix and it sounds and it feels, you know, and the great song. That's all good. But I think it really is just about having a place to like play, you know. I love that. I love that. Great answer. <laughs> Sorry, I went on, but no, it's good. That's I, I do for. go on. <laughs> I think like talking is a defense mechanism for doing really long sessions and not being able to work consistently for the whole time. So I've got to like, just, I got to fill the, the, the dead space while you recalibrate or whatever. So I always just turn around in my chair and then talk to someone about whatever. I love it. Well, I really appreciate so it feels all like of that. Your, it was good. It was good. I really appreciate all your insight. I, I think that, you know, this kind of thinking can really help somebody that's trying to figure this out. Um, and, and a mindset shift rather than a skill shift. And I, I think that that was yeah. important to pass on. Yeah. Yeah. All of my big proudest moments were about that. It wasn't mm -hmm. like I finally got good at something. I just looked at it at a different angle and was just like, oh, that's what it is. You know? Yeah. And I think like so much is like that. Like singers trying to find how they're the best way to sing. It's like yeah. everyone thinks they need to take lessons to get better and better. But it's just like you need to like take a step back and, and understand your own voice and how it works. And yeah. then when you do that, I think you can just sort of like fall into place. You don't actually have to get good at anything. Mm -hmm. But that's like what getting good is or something. You know, uh -huh. I don't know. Right. It's weird. Yeah, it is weird. It's like right. letting go of the idea of there being a good that you have to get to. Mm. Then you realize... But it, it you you can't fake it. You actually have to like come to that genuine yes. conclusion or something, yes. and then maybe you have a shot, you know, yeah. at doing something cool. Yeah, but, yeah. There's its own little hero's journey of uh, of shedding. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Joseph Campbell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>